أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Allah Azza wa Jal says وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my slave asks you about me, then certainly I am near. Allah did not say if my slave asks, He says when my slave asks, because He expects that absolutely it will happen. He's optimistic about you. You may not be optimistic about yourself, Allah is optimistic about you. He tells His Prophet wasallam when they ask you about me, our expectation was that the, Allah would tell him, when they ask you, you tell them that I'm close. But no, when they ask you, Allah stops talking to His Messenger and talks to you and me directly and says, I am close for sure. Halfway through that ayah, the conversation is no longer with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The conversation is between you and Allah directly. You haven't talked to Allah in a long time. You feel like when you, do, you don't talk to someone, you feel like they don't want to talk to you. Where were you all this time? You want to go through somebody else. Is he still mad at me? You know, you don't want to deal with them directly. But Allah Azza wa breaks that wall. He comes to you directly and says, I am most certainly near. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ And then you feel like you've been so far away. Why would he answer my prayers? And he says, أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعْ I immediately respond to the single dua of the one who makes dua. The single prayer, the single request, the single call of the one who made the call. In other words, in this beautiful ayah, Allah isn't even talking about the one who makes hours and hours of dua. He's talking about someone who turned to Allah just one time. Even one time. Allah doesn't say, oh, okay. All this time you party, and now you need something and you come to me for dua. Get lost. No, 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 no. I will immediately respond even to that person. At that one time that they made the dua. And what are his qualifications? You know, we feel like if you're going to be able to address someone important, you should have prerequisites. That is always the case. And even spiritually speaking, people might you know, feel, well, if you're going to make dua to Allah, then you better be dressed properly. You better be in the masjid. It's the best place to make dua is the haram or the Kaaba or al-masjid al-nabawi. Or you have better, you know, have stopped sinning and then you should make dua, etc. And all of those things are true. But in this ayah of hope, Allah says, the only qualification I need from you is that you're ready to make the dua. That's it. You could be in the lowest, in the pits of darkness, just turn back to Allah, nobody else. You're not doing this to show anybody else how religious you are, or to impress anybody else, or you're not concerned about the judgment of anybody else. People around you and me will think much, they either think much better than who we are, or much worse than who we are. People around you think you're a really good person, and you know what you are. Or people around you think you're a horrible human being, yet there's no goodness in you. And neither of them know. Allah knows, Allah knows, and you know. You don't let the judgment of people fool you. You don't let you, yourself do that. You don't even know where you stand, only Allah truly knows. So you leave all of those judgments behind. Doesn't matter what people say about you, good or bad, it doesn't matter what they say about you. You just turn to Allah and you ask Him. You forgot about the noise, all the other noise. And whenever you make that dua, إِذَا da'an. I will respond to the one who makes the call. I, and I will, Allah says, respond immediately whenever he makes the call. This is in the context of this, the month of Ramadan, especially in the month of Ramadan, because Allah has extended his rope, call on Allah. Ask Allah for things. Speak with Allah. Speak with Allah when you're alone. Speak with Allah when you're in the car. You don't have to speak to Allah in Arabic, it's okay. You can speak to him in Punjabi, it's fine. You can speak to him in Bangla. You can speak to him in English. It's, it's completely fine. You, can speak to, you don't have to speak to him in Fusha, you can speak to him in Ammiya, it's cool. Allah Azza wa Jalla taught all languages. If you don't know the language of, of the, the scripture, it's fine. You, but but the, the thing Allah wants from you is to connect to him directly, first and foremost. To speak with him, to call on him. To call on him. How many people actually call on Allah? Talk to Allah, beg before Allah, cry before Allah. The more you will talk to him, you know, we, we, we feel awkward. Somebody might see me talking to, talking to myself in the car. You know, maybe I've got a psychological problem. You know, this is what's called Iman Bil Ghaib. You truly believe in the NC. If you feel awkward, then you feel like he's not really listening. If you truly believe that he's listening, talk to him. Who cares about what anybody else thinks? That's just between you and him. And so he makes a request of you. He gave you an offer. I'll answer your prayers when you call. Whenever you call, I will answer. 
But on the flip side of it, he made a request from you. He says, فَلْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Then at the very least, they should at least try to respond to me. You're talking to Allah and Allah says, I'll respond to you. But now Allah says, you should respond to me too. Or at least try to respond to me too. He didn't say respond because that would mean you have to be perfect. He said, try to respond. Istijaba. At least show me the desire to respond. But if you want to respond to someone, you have to hear them first. It's impossible to respond to somebody unless you listen to them. If there was no request made, there's no response. If there's no questions asked, there's no response. So the fact that Allah is asking for a response means He's asking you to listen to Him first. But how do you listen to Allah? Oh wait, that's what the word of Allah is. When you're reciting the word of Allah, when you're listening to the word of Allah, when you're thinking about the word of Allah, you're listening to things that require a response. That's Allah talking to you. So He says, it's time. You're speaking to me, let me speak to you too. You want me to respond, why don't you res try and respond to me too? This is telling us that the Qur'an at its core is actually a conversation between the slave and the master. Dua is when we speak to Allah, Qur'an is when Allah speaks to us. So beautiful. Yeah, that's, what a, that's how a conversation becomes complete, isn't it? It can't just be one way. It has to be both ways. We have to listen to Allah, and then Allah will listen to us also. Well, yu'minu bi and continue to believe in me. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So they may be set straight. We are now learning the essential ingredients for how to fix our life. How, to fi how do I fix my life? How do you fix your life? It's actually to truly be in conversation with Allah. I will speak with Him and He will speak with me. I will speak with Him with my dua, with my request, with my supplication, with my confessions to Him, with my admissions to Him about where I stand, what I need, what my mistakes are, how sorry I am. What I, you know, what I hope to, to accomplish, what could better myself, how, I I, how I'm hopeful when I, when I meet him, that I don't disappoint him, that he forgives me for the mistakes that I made, all of those are my conversations to him. And then when he speaks to me, when he give, speaks to me, it's not just, he's, by the way, he's not just telling you what to do when he speaks to you. When he speaks to you, he's giving you hope. He's making you grateful. He's making you conscious and aware. He's making you, you know, uh, aware of the people around you and how you treat them. He's opening your eyes to reality. This, this conversation will set you straight. You, there are some people, you know, when you have a problem, you just need to talk to somebody. These ayat are telling you, these 30 days are days to talk to Allah. This is the conversation we have to have with Allah. If you can accomplish that. Some of you are working at night time. You can't make it to taraweeh prayer. Some of you are, you know, you're going to have a hard time coming into the masjid. You can't listen to lectures or durus or whatever. Some of you have exams or, you know, you're taking extra courses in the summer. You have a busy Ramadan. It's not going to be an easy time for some of you. It's going to be very, very busy. Those of you that can make the time for extra ibadah, wonderful. Those of you who can't, understand this fundamental and your Ramadan will be beautiful. It's not just about fasting. It's about reconnecting and re-engaging Allah Azza wa Jal in conversation in this prescribed, in this guided way. May Allah Azza wa Jal make all of us those who directly speak with Allah and Allah Azza wa Jal speaks to our hearts through His book. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikr. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim